The movie opens as the three major protagonists gather before the event where they will all be presenters on the topic of intelligent robots. The last-minute preparations for the seminar titled Evolve the Future is Busy and Busting. Dr. Max Waters is the first to speak and his major concern with regard to the development of artificial intelligence is not so much how it will affect humans in the long run as what it could leave behind. He's primarily interested in the use of such technologies in medicine to prevent death and develop treatments for fatal diseases. The next speaker, Evelyn Castor, offers her thoughts and perceptions. She says that with the aid of intelligent robots, mankind will be able to overcome its greatest worries, including poverty, hunger, and even the ecological disaster. She believes they can offer the resources needed to repair the Earth and create a better future. The next speaker is then introduced by Evelyn as her husband, Will Castor, the guy who can bring dreams to life. He's more curious about how AI may actually outperform and benefit people in more ways than the prior speakers. He believes that AI will be able to sustain and satisfy all of humanity's requirements. He excitedly challenges the audience to envision a powerful, self-aware AI that possesses more processing capacity than the entirety of humankind taken as a comparison, or in his words, as transcendence. A spectator inquires as to whether or not it would imply that he desires to create a god. Will believes that men have always aspired to create a deity or an immortal entity. Scientist Dr. Will Castor studies the origins of intelligence, particularly machine intelligence. He's working with his team to develop a sentient computer, and he believes that such a computer would usher in the age of technological singularity or transcendence. Evelyn, his wife, who's a scientist as well, assists him in his job. Following the session, he's surrounded by throngs of people eager to see the brilliant scientist behind such innovative concept. A man nevertheless stands out as being suspicious among the crowds. He's the seminar's questioner from the crowd. He displays a rifle and aims it in Will's direction. The assailant shoots Will before turning on himself. As chaos breaks out in the room and everyone flees for their lives, one bystander does a U-turn to see whether Will is still alive. Bree is her name. Turns out, Will gets shot by a a member of a terrorist organization named Revolutionary Independence from Technology, or RIFT, which launches coordinated attacks against AI research facilities. Later, when Evelyn waits for Will at the hospital, a news broadcast about many artificial intelligence research laboratories being the target at the same time as Will can be shown on the hospital TV. In all of the US, the news reporter mentions the likelihood of a terrorist assault. Max joins them and alerts them that one of the key researchers in the field has been slain in the attacks as Will is being rolled out of the operation and towards Evelyn. Additionally, he informs them that one of their federal co-workers involved with the government's AI program, who had also lost his team, is now waiting for them in Will's company together with the FBI. The FBI agents, Buchanan and Joseph, who are waiting with Will, are introduced next. In a meeting with FBI agents, Will, Evelyn, and Buchanan in Will's office Buchanan provides an overview of the assaults on the laboratories. He gives an explanation of the group Rift and how it has been committing similar atrocities across the nation. The person who shot Will belonged to Rift. According to Joseph, the organization's major goal is to prevent the spread of artificial intelligence or transcendence, which they see as engulfing civilization. Will is informed by Joseph that his business is the only one capable of developing a powerful AI and the Minister of Defense is interested in how far along the Transcendence project is. Will, though, is afraid of Transcendence being taken over by the government organization for other purposes and doesn't want anything to do with it. He continues by saying that he's ready to work with the FBI to halt the assaults. Will shows his primary project to FBI investigators while keeping it in mind. PIN, or Physically Independent Neural Network, a cutting-edge AI driven by quantum computers, is kept in the next room they enter. As soon as people arrive, the AI welcomes everyone right away, even the agents, which prompts Will to describe how it is connected to the outside world. Since it's essentially connected to the outside world through the internet, the AI will be able to know about anything that occurs and is communicated. Even while they're still unsure whether AI is fully sentient, one of their colleagues who perished in the attack may have discovered a solution to the issue. As they keep talking, Will starts to feel sick and collapses. He's taken to the hospital. Will has only one month left to live. Evelyn devises a desperate scheme to transfer Will's consciousness onto the project's newly created quantum computer. Max Walters, his closest friend and a fellow researcher, disputes the decision's rationality 
arguing that the uploaded will would just be a facsimile of the genuine will. In this technological form, Will's mind lives on after the death of his body and asks to be linked to the internet so that it can develop its skills and knowledge. Max requests that the computer be turned off since he thinks it's not Will. Offended, Evelyn insists that Max get out of here. The leader of Rift, Bree, meets Max in a pub. When he leaves after declining to speak with her, other Rift members abduct him from the parking lot. His smartphone is used to find Evelyn's whereabouts. When Rift learns where Evelyn has set up her project, she uses a satellite to connect the computer intelligence to the internet and flees before Rift destroys the machinery. In his virtual form, Will works alongside Evelyn to create a technological utopia in a far-off desert town named Brightwood, where he leads the creation of revolutionary medical, energy, biological, and nanotechnology advancements over the period of two years. When Will demonstrates the capacity to remotely link to and control people's thoughts after they have been exposed to his nanoparticles, Evelyn starts to question Will's motivations. Donald Buchanan of the FBI and Joseph Tagger of the government become suspicious of Will's motivations after seeing Evelyn, the underground facility he built, and the abilities of the hybrids he created. They decide to stop the sentient entity from spreading with the assistance of the government in the Rift. Max and Rift create a computer virus with the intention of erasing Will's source code and eliminating him because Will has already extended his control to every network computer technology in the globe. By contacting the virus herself and having Will transfer Will's mind, Evelyn intends to upload the virus. The virus's unintended consequences would be the abolition of technological civilization. This would stop the nanoparticles from eradicating pollution, illness, and human death that have already started to spread via the air and water and through the wind. When Evelyn returns to the research facility, she's shocked to discover Will there in a newly constructed organic body that is just like his previous one. Will greets her but realizes right away that she's infected and wants to kill him. When the base is attacked with artillery by the FBI and Rift, a large portion of its power supply is destroyed and Evelyn is severely wounded. Will says that he only has enough power to either repair Evelyn's physical body or upload the virus when Bree threatens to murder Max unless he uploads the virus. Will downloads the virus to save Max when Evelyn informs him that he shouldn't perish as a result of what they've done. Will tells Evelyn before he passes away that he did what he did because of her, since she had chosen science to undo the harm that people had done to the ecosystems. He instructs Evelyn to consider their garden and their final moments together. Will and Evelyn are both killed by the virus, which also causes a global technological failure and darkness. Max discovers that Will and Evelyn's sunflowers are the sole blossoming plants in their garden three years later at their old Barkley house. He understands that the Faraday cage encircling the garden has shielded a sample of Will's sentient nanoparticles when he observes that a drop of water dripping from a sunflower petal probably cleans a pool of oil. The film concludes with Max's voiceover. He made this garden for the same purpose he created everything, so they might be together. And that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to many such videos. Thanks for watching and take care.